use objects and instantiate new objects during GZ. Okay? Um, how can this possibly work? If during GZ I'm creating new objects, that doesn't really sound like simple. Um, it is not. We are showing you the final results of all the time we spent, and it wasn't like just two weeks. But we actually found um, very high level ideas that helped us solve these problems. Okay. Do you understand the problem? It's like if the GC is collecting memory while at the same time mutating the memory space, there might be some uh, this intelligence. So, yeah. Sorry. I, actually, in the garbage collector literature, you have the garbage collector and the mutator, uh, which are different. Um, we are somehow a mutator, so we have to solve this issue. So we came down to what we call, we, we have different types of closure, but the object closure is what we want to uh, talk about here. The object closure is a self-contained set of objects that do not have any exit or in entry arrows. So if we keep everything inside this closure, we are sure that nothing is going to corrupt the space when we are discarding it. So the first thing is everything we create during GC has to go away before finishing GC. So there is nothing that survives GC that was created during GC except some specific things that we have to have. Like the list of rescued ephemerals. That's a result of the GC that has to survive the GC obviously because the image needs to know. So it's a self-contained object graph. Created objects do not live after GC. There is no explicit new in our code, though there could be. And the created objects are block closures, environment context, and then arrays that are required to in interface with the host VM. We are um, we are implementing a VM in small talk. So we have, at the same time, the VM we're implementing and the VM that's running our code, right? And there are two different VMs. But during all our development process, we want to be able to test the parts of the new VM we are implementing. Like, for example, we implement the G and we want to test the G. We implement the GC and we want to test the GC. So what we do, we have lots of tests, of course. We have many tests, we have a very decent coverage ratio, but we also want to actually use the GC as part of the whole system. So what we do is we build the GC that we are doing and plug it into the host VM that's running our code and it becomes the GC that's in more minutes on this, right? It, it becomes the GC of the host VM. So we end up with the VM that's complete with just one part replaced by the code we're doing. So that lets us actually stress and use the code we're writing. So these arrays here are required to interface with the host VM, like the ephemerals arrive. And these two objects are created as part of normal small talk execution. Whenever there is a block closure, you need to create a block closure, and if a block, um, uh, well, whenever there's a block, the bytecodes will actually create a new object, a block closure, to hold, hold the space for all the data of the block, right? like the whole context and all this stuff. So that's a new. That's an implicit new that's not really written there, but it's part of the execution. And for environment context, whenever there's a block, uh, referencing a variable that's inside the block that requires an environment context, that's just how it works, and that's going to create an array for an environment context. And that's an implicit new again. So the VM will instantiate both in the young, in the young space, okay, and the young space we are actually scanning. So what we do is we only scan up to the space.
place the size when we started the GC. So on entry to our GC, we save the size of the both the old space and the young space. And anything that's created after that size on entry, we just don't scan it. And we withdraw. And we withdraw, right. And we also do the same with the stack. We just scan the stack starting, the stack is the actual stack, right, where the return uh, addresses are stored, arguments for methods and local variables. We scan the stack starting on, on the address where it was when the GC started. So anything that's pushed after GC starts, we don't scan. And since we have the object closure, there's not going to be any outside pointers pointing to these new objects that has just been created. So uh, that's how we are sure we are not mixing the new objects created during GC and the objects that are part of the uh, space we have to scan. And that's why I said earlier that we might actually have new in our code because if this new is placed after the, the starting size of the young space it doesn't matter. These are actual news. And then, <coughs> before returning, we need to create a few arrays. And uh, these are the arrays. The remember set uh, in address implementation is called remember table. We, since we we coalesce all the young space into the old space, we just create a new remember set. Um, the nature of references, the class check references, and the maximize methods are related to the code cache of the JIT, the code cache of the JIT. Um, all the literal of reference from the cache, the actual class checks in the product of the methods, and the, all the maximize methods. Th those are references from a blob, a binary blob, that's a code cache that we need to fix, so we need to maintain tables uh, at that point. And then we allocate a few more arrays. Uh, the weak containers arrive, and the females arrive, and then we just forget some arrays that we have created during GC. Well, there, is, there are two things I want to mention. One is very subtle, is that uh, our code is multiple code. Uh, we do assignment and uh, probably some variables go to the remember set. So, so we have to uh, create a fake remember set 